What's up guys? It's Brad, Yamaha Marine Center. Here in Orange Park, off of the beautiful 295, across the street from Adam at Carly Davidson. Hopefully you know where we are by now. But today, we have yet another new piece of inventory that just came in. So new, we don't even have a trailer for it yet, so ignore the trailer. Uh, if you need one of those, we can definitely work that out. But, <clears throat> it is a 2021 Key West 244 Blue Water, or 244cc, I guess it's all the same thing, 244cc Blue Water. Uh, more of their fishable boat, where the FS series, like this 219 right here, is uh, designed a little bit more around you know family, making it more comfortable. The center console series is more of a fishing boat, and we'll show you the difference between the two. I wish I had a 239 here right now to kind of compare and contrast those two, because the 239, it's a very similar size, but the layouts are completely different. Um, as we always do, looking at the front of the boat, uh, you can see the gigantic flare. Uh, probably one of the biggest flares in any boat that we sell here. And it comes out to a, a really, really flat bow. Pull off to the side here so you can see the shear on it. It's a really aggressive entry, which gives it a nice ride. And being foam filled like all the Key West, it, uh, nice and solid sound. You don't hear a lot of water slapping against the sides. And a really nice dry ride. Really, really steep entry. You can see how steep it is up front. Uh, lifting strikes. They actually almost have a little reverse chine to them as well. Um, but this chine up here is pretty aggressive. So again, really nice ride quality. Probably one of the best running boats. Uh, again, they do it on purpose to be more geared towards offshore, offshore type fishing, that kind of thing. And uh, <clears throat> it is 24 feet 4 inches, which is why they give you that 244 model. It has a nine foot beam, and this one has a 30 inch transom. So you can see how deep it is up into the splash wall there. Uh, dead rise, it's a, a variable dead rise, so it's like 21, 24. Uh, it looks pretty steep back here, but then it flattens out. I don't know if you can see right where it hits the trailer or that uh, lifting strake. Gives it a little bit flatter profile, but all in all, Really nice running boat. Just sold one of these not too long ago, and I was pretty impressed with the way it ran. Uh, trim tabs integrated. I believe that's a Garmin GT51. Uh, since most people trailer keep these boats, the transom mounted transducers give you some of the best readings. Uh, it does everything uh, bottom sonar imaging, side imaging, temperature, uh, and it's a chirp transducer. And I think you can get them in uh, low, mid, or high. So pretty cool stuff um, twin 150s these are the mechanical engines we do it to kind of cut down on cost a little bit uh, but it does have a 140 gallon fuel tank um, maximum horsepower is a single 350 uh, they recommend horsepower between 230 and 300 of course all we offer is Yamaha's so this makes the most sense to do twin 150s because as you can see on the options list this boat gives you a ton of standards and then what we added brings it to an MSRP of around 107855 and there's all the stuff we added to the boat to bring it to that price. As always, check with your local dealer. MSRP is usually high and uh, that price does not include a trailer or anything like that. But coming inside the boat, you have a nice three-step ladder. Getting in and out of the boat, nice handle here, a little transom cut out. I mean, call it a door because there's no door. Uh, Pop-up cleat back here. Pop-up fender holder so you can save your cleats for your dock lines. This is a pretty substantial pop-up cleat on this one so you can run you know, half-inch lines or something like that if you wanted to. Uh, rod holders everywhere. Across the transom, you can see your freshwater fill right down there. Uh, live well, live well, bait well, whatever you want to call it. Again, more fishability than is built into their standard or their FS series. Uh, slide out cooler so we upgraded the leaning post a little bit. Rocket launchers, more rocket launchers. Nice thick hard top. Uh, even though it's a big hard top it is pretty much hollow so it doesn't add a ton of weight so you don't get you know a lot of rocking motion from the weight being up too high but you do get the option to add a bunch of cool stuff like the overhead lights, the integrated rigid spreaders and then some more speakers up there because who can have enough speakers? 
uh, life jacket net so it'll take up good storage with a bunch of other nonsense. Uh, E-box, two color map light, red and white. And then of course it's set up for outriggers. And then coming down into the helm seat, this is the upgraded part. We did the armrests with the bolsters. So turn it into a seat. And then a lean and post like that one over there. And then of course we have the footrest that has some storage there. Little chart pocket or whatever you want to put down in the bottom. The more storage the better. Pretty clean layer on the dash. We did a, I think that's a 1242 touch. So it has a, I think a single transducer inlet, but it is NEMA capable and all that good stuff. So we can tie it into the Yamaha gauge. I don't know if this Clarion is available to NEMA in, but I know the Fusions we can get integrated with the Garmin's and all that good stuff. Uh, trim tabs, auxiliary input for the stereo, all your regular switches, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, this one does have a macerated live well, uh, macerated fish box somewhere around here. <clears throat> Probably the accessory. I don't think we have batteries in it yet. Oh, there's a the macerator. So we can chop up the nastiness that's in the fish box. And then we have some additional panels up here for the forward bilge or down here for the forward bilge. And then additional accessory switch in case you want to put some lights on there or something. Ignition switch is the two key system with the kill switch. Uh, nice big cap and cutouts. So you have plenty of room to store tools rods, gaffs, a uh, bunch of stuff under the gunnel cap, and then more rod holders on the gunnel side, some cup holders there, which we can add more, maybe those mate series that are the uh, cup holder rod holder combination, that way you get the best of both worlds. Uh, fold up, or fold down transom seat, which you can remove, and there's some uh, more bilge access. I don't know if you can see the door back here, but that allows us to access the bilge. So we can pull the seat off completely. You know, if you knew you were going fishing or something, you want to just leave it at the dock or garage or something like that, you can pull it off. But it is probably the best spot to ride in as you're headed out. The most comfortable ride, at least. There's a shot of the splash well, steering system, a single cylinder, Sea Star hydraulic. More storage under this cap. You see the fresh water spigot down there. Uh, I don't remember what the freshwater tank is, somewhere around 8 to 13 gallons, I believe. And then the raw water bib is on that side as we have a high pressure raw water system in here as well. Coming over into the center console, nice deep center console. Looks like this thing's plumbed for a holding tank. Uh, don't know why it wouldn't have been installed yet, but if we have it, we'll put it in. Those hoses are for freshwater raw water, your freshwater tank's right in that storage compartment there they make everything pretty easy to get to you see the wiring you know for this level and quality of boat they do a pretty nice job of keeping everything clean tidy out of the way and then this canvas protects it well if you got to go in there and do your business uh coming to the front of the boat yeah, you get another good inclination of how seaworthy it is how wide the shoulder of the boat is and that's that flat flare so they really couldn't utilize that space inside the boat. So it has a big casting deck up front. You know, if you're throwing a cast net for bait or something like that along the beach, uh, works really well. Um, the only thing I don't like about this boat is the interior size is pretty similar to the 239 FS. So a boat that's almost, you know, a good foot shorter. It's about the same size in the cockpit. Uh, the interior of the boat feels very similar because of that huge flare and all the shoulder in the boat. But again, that, that gives it a nice ride quality, so I guess can't be too picky. Uh, some more speakers up front. Uh, insulated boxes up here. You can see they drain, uh, unfortunately, into the bilge, so don't put stinky fish in there. You're gonna get a stinky bilge. I do like this feature, that fold down seat here, so it makes walking around a lot easier. And then, uh, of course, the new upholstery new stuff this year instead of stitching the logos they've done these uh, nice rubberized embossed deals so you don't get fading and then uh, this material you don't get any of that pinking or bluing and it seems to stand up to the sun a lot better as well and I think it looks pretty cool another good shot of the hard top board spreader and then your switches over on this side over here to control the aft spreader and forward spreader uh, if you do get some stinky fish and you want to throw them somewhere, there's this nice size macerated box I was telling you about. Uh, you can 
fit. You know, good size king, I would think. I mean, it goes down in there pretty good. I would say it's a good, you know, four, four and a half feet. It seems like it covers almost all the way forward in the center section of the deck. Uh, boat is also able to have a uh, bow table, bow filler that would fill this area right here. We've done a couple of those. Um, anchor is in this locker here. Again, this section of the boat is not very thick. So to put a locker up front in the bow just wasn't possible, so they put it here. Uh, we didn't do the windlass on this one because it is a surface mount windlass. Uh, so it takes up a lot of that four deck. And uh, I don't know, so many people are using trolling motors these days instead of the old anchoring systems. You almost don't need uh, an anchor anymore. I guess that depends on who you ask. It's good to have. But uh, hopefully that gave you some good information on the boat. If you need anything else, feel free to call Brad or Barton at 904-644-7631. Or you can always get us on the website at yamahamarinejax.com.